So this is what we are talking about today. Um, I've been I've been wanting to do a video on this for a long time, at least a dedicated video. But we set up a beta rack that's ready to house about a hundred betas. I think it will turn out to be about 96. But we got four rows. One's not even filled. We got one with uh, empty tanks on it. We just need to get a big beta import in. But the betas are just doing phenomenal. We got the little divider cards. Uh, this is the old beta rack, and we'll go through what worked and what didn't work on this. But we're going to go all in depth with this beta rack and tell you why we did it, how we did it, and all the little details. And also, we had some special guests today, so we'll get into that too. What is going on shrimp keepers or beta keepers or beta keepers depending on how you say it. Uh, this is Rob with FlipAquatics.com and today we are going over our beta setup. So we have this new beta setup behind us that I talked to the IBC International Beta Contest I believe it is. But I don't really know. I just know it's called the IBC. Or maybe it's not. I don't know. But I talked to some beta keepers at the contest in our at aquatic experience. On um, this past, like, I don't know, it was maybe two months ago, and they gave me a ton of ideas to how to keep betas, what to keep them in, and I'm gonna go through all that today. So these are actually Beanie Baby storage display containers. So they work really good for betas, and again, we're gonna go through all the details, but we had a lot of special guests here today, which was a ton of fun, um, and I won't ruin it for you, but there was a lot of people here. We walked around, we toured the whole place, and uh, it was just a great time. So let's get right into today's video. So first things first, I want to talk about this system and why it didn't work for us. Um, so these are 1.5 gallon cubes. We're actually going to transition this and use it for a selective breeding for probably Caradina shrimp. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, one set of racks to one big sump and one set of racks to one big sump. And I'll use the sump for the babies and then all the breeding tanks for the adults. And so this is going to be a really cool system. So we're not scrapping this system. We just can't use it for betas. Now the first reason why is we went through and we blacked out all the panels, which um, made a lot of sense. It looked really good for us. But what happened is um, you can never remove the blackout between these. So you can never get these two betas and the males to flare up it against or flare up to each other. Same thing with this. They couldn't flare up. They couldn't flare up. And so we had to add this like little ball right here um, just to, so that they could flare up at themselves. And that way they can get exercise and stretch out their dorsal fins and all their other fins and everything. And so that was problem number one. Problem number two is this room probably only gets up to about uh, 78 degrees. I don't know where a thermostat is or I would tell you. Um, but it only gets up to about 78 degrees. And these tanks were only sitting at like 72, 73 degrees. Betas prefer 78, up to 80. Even Kasha even said up to 90, uh, which is creative pet keeping, a person I really rely on. And so, uh, so yeah, they weren't warm enough. The betas weren't doing good. When you look into a tank that's solid black, it's really, really hard to see in there. And so we were having a hard time seeing betas. Sometimes they would, you know, tanks that didn't have anything in them were getting fed. You know, just a lot of issues. Um, we had all these little, you know, these things in here. They, they went like this, little overflows. And so, like, the beta would hide behind there. Um, they would jump over. And so we'd have to find a creative way to cover the tops. And so it just wasn't working. Temperature was wrong. Everything was wrong. And so coming over to the new rack, we did a lot of things different. Um, and we will go over all that in a second, but let me first show you all the different people that stopped by today to check out Flip Aquatics. What do they do, Kasha? The wiggle dance. The wiggle dance? They're doing it. They, they go upright and they do this. <laughs> They're like, hey, especially for girls. That's and awesome. Like, hey girl, I do a little wiggle for you. There's a lot of terminology that I have. The, wi the wiggle dance. I like it. Up. Yeah. Call them the grabby grabby claws. The grabby grabbies. And everyone is now calling them because like the grabby grabby claws. I'm like, That's all. I'm gonna start calling them that. We're gonna make that a thing. <laughs> oh. And our second, our third guest today at Flip Aquatics, Jay Wilson himself. Today I have a special guest here, and it is Jay Wilson himself, Mr. North Fan USA. As you guys know, we partnered up and we're doing a lot of things with Northfin USA. What are we doing this weekend, man? We got something really cool going on. OCA, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Strongsville, Ohio, Holiday Inn, 25th anniversary. And if you're not there, well, then you're not there. Hey, he said it. So 
I'll be there. I'll definitely be there Friday. I don't know if I'll be there Saturday, but we're going to have a little flip aquatics booth set up and we're going to have some stuff going on. Just hanging out and get to know you all. So hopefully we'll see you at the OCA. So Kasha, you're coming to the OCA tomorrow, right? Yep. Are you going to be there all weekend? Yes. Okay. And what, what got you to come to the OCA? Like what, what was the turning factor? Jason from Primetime Aquatics is like, you gotta go. And I've never been. I actually have no clue what to expect. It's gonna be my very first time. And I'm really excited. Are you, are you doing a meet and greet? I don't, I don't know. I don't think so. No? Did you let everyone know that you were coming? No. Kasha! <laughs> I, because, I don't know. I didn't know if there's gonna be like any particular place for like people to meet up. And this way I can like sneakily kind of like just watch people and look at fish. and. Oh, that's and awesome. Sneak. I mean, I... I, I I could put a little thing up today. But it, it's kind of nice to just enjoy uh, an event for enjoying it. Because I yeah, know yeah. that I've never, both, all three Aquashellas, I have not seen everything. Because yep. I'm always like at the booth or I'm doing something else. And I've never actually took my time to walk around and look at everything. So I kind of want to do that. So Jay, we're going to the OCA this weekend. It's going to be a great time. But what can people expect at the OCA? If you've never been to a fish show, the OCA is more so like a family knit party or get together. It's like a big Thanksgiving for fish keepers, whether you're keeping cichlids or catfish. If you've been to some of the larger shows like an Aquashella, this is going to be much smaller, but it's going to be more intimate. And what I mean by that is there's just a lot of folks interacting, educating, and to me, it's one of the best cichlid central shows just because of the hard work that gets put in by the Ohio Cichlid Association. And this is their 25th year. If you've been doing a show on any scale for 25 years, it has to be at least decent to be there. And there's going to be some really cool people there from Creative Pet Keeping, Flip Aquatics will be there, North Fin USA will be there, and some of the most amazing fish keepers and catfish collectors that you'll ever find in one location right here in Ohio. So as you guys can see, we have Mr. North Fin himself, Jay Wilson, that stopped by. Shout out to North Fin USA, um, who we're really close with, we work with, and... Uh, and so shout out to Jay Wilson for stopping by. Also created pet keeping and foo, uh, Wendy. They were all a great time. It was really nice having them. But anyway, with this rack, the big changes that we made is I wanted to do a little shelf um, that the tanks could sit on. And again, these are Beanie Baby display cases. You can get them on Amazon. I want to say they're about $3 a piece. You can get them a pack of 25. And so, uh, so yeah, super, super nice. And down here, Mark came up with this idea of actually drilling a hole out of it. So this is actually a little heat cable. Um, it's a reptile heat cable, and you put it down into this crack so it won't come out, and then the tank sits flat on the board. And so that was our way of ensuring that the tanks wouldn't rock back and forth, they wouldn't spill over, anything like that. And so as you can see, they fit perfect in there. And then you can just kind of center them on there so it's heating evenly. And then we went one step further. We actually plug, let me find it, right here. We plug the heat cable into here, which is the heating side. And then it comes up here and we have a temperature control. We have it set to 78, but it's set at 80.8. .8. And that's most likely because we have this heater down here that radiates heat up. And so we bring the probe over here, comes around, comes around, and then boom, it goes right into our middle one. So we know what our middle is sitting at, which usually the middle is the hottest. And so, uh, yeah, so that's really nice. It's actually, it sits right in the tank we drilled into the top. <clears throat> and then the beta covers, so these are actually really nice. We actually drill a little hole so we could feed through there and also they could breathe through there. So there's still good oxygen exchange. The downside to these is you have to do water changes a lot. We're doing water changes uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, so three times a week to ensure that, you know, nothing really fouls the water or anything goes too crazy. Now, a really cool thing, um, this guy's just kind of sleeping. That's our old guy. I don't know how old he is, but let's see. We'll get, these ones will flare up really good. So when you take these cards out, the two males see each other and they instantly get upset. So they try fighting each other. Now this actually is exercise for them. So it stretches out their fins and it lets you really see like what the beta looks like. Because the other way, they're just kind of sitting like this. And their fins are just kind of down, you know, nothing crazy. Here, this is like exercise for them. And uh, it's, uh, apparently to betas, it's really good for them. And so, uh, so yeah, so super cool. We let them do that, you know, probably two, three times a week. Um, I think Mike does it every single water change. And then you just put the card back in there, and it's all good. And you can walk through, like, these two are right next to each other, and they don't even know it. 
So we'll take it out of there and see what they say. They're slowly realizing that each other are there. Oh. They don't even care. Oh, I know what it is. They're eating brine shrimp. So Mike should have maybe just fed them brine shrimp that are up at the top. I don't know. But they're cool. Anyway, we're going to uh, be listing these guys on Black Friday. That's my deadline. So these will all be listed on Black Friday. It'll be what you see is what you get betas. And it'll be tank one, two, three, four, five. And then there'll be a picture of the beta. And how I'm going to get a picture of them is I'm actually going to take two containers out. I learned this from Simply Beta. Put them right next to each other. Get the plants out of there. And then let them flare up and take pictures of them flaring so people can actually see what they look like. Kasha loved this guy. She thought he was super unique and pretty. So definitely some really cool beta fish here or betta fish here, however you say it. And uh, we got another heat system here. So this one controls this rack and the bottom rack. And you can see that one's actually sitting at 77.2, whereas that one's sitting at 80.8. .8. So a lot of cool stuff. We got more of these to come. We're actually gonna be doing an import soon for, you know, to sock this out with all 96. And then I'm thinking we're gonna move this rack over to the other building and extend it. So we're actually gonna have the ability to have about 200, maybe 300 betas. Um, at any given time so super super cool really loving the new setup i love how mark did this where it sits down in there and he even did three passes in case we wanted to do uh three strips running back and forth so a lot of good a lot of good things to come with beta fish and uh what we're doing here at flip so i hope you guys enjoyed the video and checking out our little beta rack or better rack here at flip aquatics a lot of good things to come here in the future i hope to see you guys at the oca extravaganza this weekend uh, what is this, like November 20th? I don't even know. It's been such a crazy week. But we have a ton of stuff going on. We'll see you at the extravaganza. I'll be there Friday. I think Friday's the only day I'll be there with Amanda and my niece and nephew. And so we'll catch you guys uh, next time for the next video. I'll probably be next Tuesday. And uh, we'll talk to you guys then. So you guys make it a great weekend. And as always, God bless.